Welcome to a Ferrari dealership in Egham, Surrey. Probably not the place I imagined meeting the new supercar at the moment, the Ferrari 296 GTB that's sitting over there looking rather lovely. But hey, you've got to take your opportunities, haven't you? Because this car is in the UK only for a brief amount of time. It's being toured around the dealers. It's giving customers and potential customers a chance to poke around it. And we've been given one hour one hour to make a walk around video. So I'm gonna give you as much information as I possibly can, but apologies if it doesn't have quite the normal spit and polish of our videos. Anyway, I better stop talking and just crack on with it. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the way this car looks. I liked it when I saw the pictures. I still like it in the flesh and that's a good sign, isn't it? But the funny thing is, the SF90, this car's bigger brother, if you like, the V8 four-wheel drive plug-in hybrid. This is a V6 plug-in hybrid. When that was launched, yeah, the design was a bit meh. I'm not saying it was an ugly car. I'm just saying it was a bit generic, maybe a bit forgettable, but this just has a little something about it that that one doesn't. It's got a little pinch of the past. This is retro done right because it's inspired by a gorgeous car, the 250 LM from 1963 and you can see the influence of that model here mainly with these big upright intakes that sit on the shoulders of the car and then you've got this lovely arch line that sort of waves along the rear quarters and then these buttresses that cut in like this. I think it looks fantastic. And there's a couple of other bits to point out while we're here, the headlights. These are the daytime running lights and underneath them is just a big hole. It's something we're starting to see on a few cars. 720S um, was the first I can remember that um, pioneered this technology. Air goes in there, cools the brake. So you're using the headlights, the design elements for aero and for cooling. They're functional as well as fashionable. Come down the side of the car, clean styling. We've got a bit of a roof spoiler here. This just smooths out the airflow over the rear deck and it's a very interesting rear deck. Another 250 LM reference is that vertical rear windscreen back there, which leaves this massive expanse of engine cover here, which is nicely contoured. There's almost a double bubble look to it, and buried under there is the V6 engine. But before we get to that, a couple more things I want to show you around the back. This is the pop-up rear spoiler. So, this slides up here. This provides 100 kilograms of downforce at the rear end when you're properly on it. The exhaust pipe, I'm not sure about. I don't know what's wrong with just two circles. And the same goes for the tail lights. Now these are undeniably digital, futuristic. They're in keeping with a high-tech plug-in hybrid car like this. But I always think circular rear lights on a mid-engined, baby mid-engined Ferrari is the way to go. Speaking of the ancestry of this car, if you like, the name. So, a lot of rumors were swirling around that this thing was gonna be called Dino because that was the last Ferrari that used a V6 engine. But no, Ferrari sidestepped that. They've called it the 296 GTB. The 296, because it's a 2.9 liter, six cylinder engine. And that's the engine down there. So, 2.9 liters twin turbo v6 120 degree angle that engine on its own produces 654 horsepower and then you have an electric motor so that's sandwiched between the engine and the eight speed twin clutch gearbox same gearbox you get in the roma in the sf90 and that electric motor's quite clever because it can charge up the seven and a half kilowatt hour battery. It can start the engine. It can drive the rear axle. This car is rear wheel drive only, not four wheel drive like the SF90. It can drive the rear axle on its own. So put it in EV mode. This thing will do 15 and a half miles if you're lucky and speeds of up to 84 miles an hour. But that's not really how buyers of this thing are gonna use it. They're gonna go straight into qualify mode, ask everything from the engine and the motor all together. And that gives you 819 brake horsepower, which is, well, it's a lot of horsepower, isn't it? In fact, it's the same amount of power you get in the new 812 Competizione. And that has a 6.5 liter V12. So half the number of cylinders in this thing, but the same amount of power as the big special 812 that's recently been released. 
Numbers, you want numbers, don't you? Because this thing will do 0 to 62 when you proper unleash it, 2.9 seconds. 0 to 124 miles an hour, 7.3. Top speed, 205 miles an hour. And perhaps the most startling fact is that its lap around the Fiorano test track is one minute, 21 seconds. So it's faster than a 488 pista. It's basically the same speed, bang on, head to head with the F12 TDF. And it's only just over a second slower around Fiorano than the LaFerrari. A second slower than the LaFerrari. That's just bonkers. So, a V6 Ferrari. Am I worried? Not really. The mid-engine Ferraris have never sounded quite as good since the 488 Embrace turbos, so there's not too far to fall in that regard. And this V6 has the internal nickname of Piccolo V12, Little V12. Ferrari says it speaks with the force of the turbos and the harmony of the high frequency notes of a naturally aspirated V12. We'll see about that. Interestingly, the two turbos sit inside the V, spin to 180,000 RPM and have 11% lower rotating mass than the F8, so they spin up even faster. And the F8 had basically zero lag. This thing's gonna be freaky. Okay, so we're on the inside now. Let me just adjust the seat and the wheel for my tiny human frame. There we go. And the interior, this whole design in here is really rather sparse. You've got, I'll fire up the ignition. You've got this enormous digital instrument display straight in front of you. You've got touch sensitive pads instead of real buttons on the wheel. Your aircon control here is a sort of black panel touch sensitive display. This is an extra screen that's in front of the passenger so they can see by how much you're breaking the speed limit at any one time. And then down here is something we first saw on the SF90, which is the controls for the automatic, the twin clutch gearbox, but styled in the way of an open gate manual of old. Now, let's talk about some of the buttons on the wheel, because here you have what looks like a fairly traditional Manatino, which takes you from wet mode to sport mode, to race mode, to CT off, which is hero mode, it lets you slide the car around but within certain electronic boundaries and then if you're feeling really brave everything off and then over here we have the e-manatino so this is how you control your hybrid powertrain how you want it to behave where you want the power source to be coming from at the moment i'm in hybrid but if i press this flag i go into performance mode and if i press this stopwatch i go into qualifying which is give me absolutely everything you've got and to hell with draining the battery. And down here, of course, is ED. So that's electric drive mode. If you really wanna slink away silently and not wake up your neighbors at three in the morning. And what about practicality? Because the big thing, let's face it, with the SF90 was, it's actually a very good cruiser. It behaves like a GT car if you want it to, but there's pretty much no storage space. In here, it's a little bit more useful. You've got a kind of useful rubberized tray at the front here. You've got a cup holder, various little cubbies for your wads of money, and even space behind the seats here for, I don't know, a couple of squashy bags. There's a net here for putting various things in. It's relatively useful. Speaking of which, let's check out the front trunk. All right, let's take a look at the frunk or the fruit or the front boot. Whatever you like. Oh yeah, that's good, that's pretty good. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. It's carbon lined, this one, which is almost certainly an option for I will never miss out on an opportunity to sell you some more carbon fiber. But compared to the SF90, this is night and day. The SF90, of course, has the additional electric motor on the front axle for four wheel drive, for the traction, and that's why it eats into the space. It's a pretty useless boot that it's got on his nose. But this is good. It's basically a family car, which brings me to the positioning of the 296. It is not a direct replacement for the F8 Tributo. Ferrari have told me that several times. The F8 will go on sale, will carry on being sold rather, until next year, at which point it will disappear. And then this will replace it, surely. But no, I'm told, there may be another model that sits underneath this one. Of course, this has 
819 brake horsepower, there is space for something else. What it is, there is no decision yet, but I'm telling you, this without the hybrid gubbins, V6, 650 horsepower, super lightweight, manual gearbox. Now there's an idea. Either way, this car sits in a seriously impressive bloodline of mid-engine Ferraris, doesn't it? Here we go, 308. 328, 348, 355, 360, 430, 458, 488, FH Tributo, and then this. I cannot wait to drive this car. It's gonna cost 230, 235 grand, unless you go for the Assetto Fiorano pack, which this one has, which adds extra lightweight bits, a Lexan rear screen, loads of carbon fiber, and it gives you this funky optional stripe across the mouth and up the centre line of the car. That will set you back another 30 grand. Look, it's a sensational spec sheet. It looks fantastic. Proper little firecracker, this one.